so hello everyone so welcome to this uh, video series where we have discussed already three modules one final revision okay in a uh, quick uh, time i have just uh, recalled all of the concepts related to all of all the three modules in three separate videos those who have not seen it you can see it first and then if you want you can see this video also brief explanation of all these modules is available in our channel we have separately created the playlist for you all okay you can refer them so from module 4 the name of module 4 is stability analysis okay and also we have uh, discussed the stability analysis by using the rh theory that is routh hurwitz criterion okay the routh hurwitz criterion has created one condition that is the characteristic equation would be written in the highest power highest power degrees to the lowest power degrees in a sequence manner where no degree is skipped okay and for this characteristic equation this characteristic equation why it can be represented using one simple routh array and this for this routh array we have also discussed some of the special cases of this routh array what would be happening in this, uh, some of the special cases that is the characteristic equation in order to determine in this routh array what we should be doing is first all the powers should be representing like this in the outside part from uh, highest power to lowest power like this right you should be writing it and all of its coefficient we should be writing in this array that is from s power 5 we should write the first coefficient of s power 5 here then skip one term and write the next coefficient all the odd coefficients will be writing in the first row then all the even coefficients should be writing in the second row using the about two rows we should be trying to write the coefficient uh, should be write, trying to write the value of the third row elements okay also using second and third row we should try to write the values of the fourth row elements and so on okay and also we have discussed some of the special cases that is whenever we get in the first column okay in the first column whenever we get any zero then we have one special case so before that we should we, had, we have already discussed to how to find the roots using this uh, routh hurwitz criteria okay that is whenever in the first column we have any sign change we should be counting that number of sign changes that number of sign changes would be equal to number of roots okay and in, in order to check the stability of the system whenever we have no sign change okay then we can say that the system is stable whenever we have any sign change then we can say that the system is unstable okay yeah then whenever we have any in first column whenever we get any term zero okay that is one rule we should be we are we have already discussed two kind of rules that is one rule is called as epsilon method okay so here you can see that one rule is called as epsilon method okay where uh, that in case of zero you should be representing it as epsilon and continue to solve problems and whatever the equations we get in case of epsilon we should be representing that epsilon when by limit epsilon tending to zero and trying to reduce that epsilon term and then rewrite the routh array and then check for the sign changes or else second method is we should be replace s by 1 by z in the characteristic equation whenever we get any zero term we should stop that uh, stop then then and there then again come to the characteristic equation then replace s by 1 by z all the right all the necessary substitutions after uh, re re replacing s by 1 by z then rewrite the equation like this in terms of z then again for this uh, equation the from high rewrite the equation from highest degree to lowest degree then, then for this apply the routh array then solve it okay then we are won't be getting any zero in the first column okay then we should be checking for the sign changes or the number of roots okay so this any any one method you should be using okay one more special case we have discussed is whenever we have any row of zeros okay we are uh, we have already discussed that whenever we have any row of zeros what we should be doing okay whenever we have any row of zeros we should be checking for the above row just above this row of zeros what are what is the elements element row elements that row is called as the auxiliary equation row that you should be you should be writing like this okay then for this auxiliary equation we should be taking the de derivative of that and after taking the derivative whatever are the coefficients which are obtained that coefficient you should be replacing from the row of zeros and then continue continue to solve the problem okay so this is one more case okay the one more case is the marginal value of k okay marginal value of k means marginal value of k is that value of k for which the system becomes marginally stable okay for a marginal stable system there must be a row of zeros occurring in a routh array okay yeah it is one compulsory that for a marginally stable system in a routh array whenever we have a characteristic equation we should be getting a row of zeros if you won't get if you don't get the row of zeros we can equate the value of k is equal to k margin and uh, we should be equating that whole term that is equal to zero so that we will be getting the row of zeros okay yeah if k is equal to zero it makes the row of s power zero as row of zeros therefore k is equal to zero cannot be the marginal value of k okay the k value should not be equal to zero okay 
because if it's equal to zero, it cannot be the marginal value of k. So therefore, k is strictly greater than zero. Okay, okay. And also, we have discussed to find the frequency of sustained oscillations on problems. Okay, and also to obtain the frequency of oscillation, we should solve the auxiliary equation a of s is equal to zero. For k is equal to k margin, we have already discussed this kind of problems. Okay. So for Rauth array, all the special conditions we have already discussed. So problems related to range of k. to find the value of marginal value of k k margin and also using the marginal value to substitute back in the auxiliary equation for row of zeros okay then trying to find this frequency of sustained oscillation these kind of problems are also we have solved in model paper solutions or also in our uh, uh, playlist solutions it is available okay you can check it out and also different kinds of problems related to rauth array okay we have solved in the, in our playlist okay different different kinds of problems we have not repeated any kind of problems all the problems which are solved are of different kinds okay so that's why you should be uh, very thorough with the problems that's why we are solving all the different kinds of problems we are not wasting your time by solving similar kind of problems okay so yeah it is available in our channel you can uh, check it out okay so the next topic which we have discussed in this module is about root locus okay that is very very important and in brief we have discussed about the root locus okay so rules of construction of root locus we have discussed already okay there are eight set of rules the first rule says that root locus is always symmetrical with respect to real axis that is in this plot here in the second quadrant here yeah, one more thing a root locus always lies in the second quadrant here okay these three quadrants are of no use always the root locus or the branches of root locus always lie in the second quadrant okay that you should be knowing and always the root locus is symmetric to the uh, real axis okay second rule is identify the number of loci that is total number of loci is maximum of poles and zeros the poles and zeros we can be identifying by seeing the transfer function that is the numerator side when it's equal to 0 we would be getting the number of zeros and also the values of those zeros and whenever we take get take denominator equal to 0 of a particular transfer function we would be getting the poles number of poles as well as the values of those poles okay yeah that we should be writing it separately then we should be checking for whatever the maximum values of poles or zeros whenever what whenever we have a number of poles as greater than number of zeros that would be the total number of loci okay yeah then we have discussed separate cases if p poles are greater than zeros what what would be happening that is uh, the number of poles we should be checking that all the branches of root locus would be terminating towards infinity only okay and whenever we have any zero along with the poles one pole would be terminating towards zero and all the rest of all the other poles would be terminating towards infinity for p greater than z z greater than b z is equal to p we have already discussed it okay the rule number 3 is to find the total number of asymptotes that is straight lines Okay, caused by those uh, branches. Okay, that straight lines are uh, very very essential because using those straight lines, we should be drawing the branches of root locus that would be moving at that straight line path only. Okay, that total number of asymptotes is calculated by the formula total number of poles minus total number of zeros. Okay, the branches which are approaching to infinity will do uh, will do so along the straight line called the asymptotes of root locus. Okay, we have already discussed it. The next rule is to find the angle of asymptotes. it is given by this formula theta is equal to 2q plus 1 into 180 degree divided by p minus z we know that how many how many number of asymptotes we get that many number of angles we would be getting okay the value of q ranges from z starts from 0 and it comes it ends till p minus z minus 1 okay that is poles minus zeros for example if you have three poles so four poles and one zeros then the total values of q would be 4 minus 2 minus 4 4 minus 1 minus 1 that is 2 okay yeah like this you would be getting the angle of asymptotes then centroid this is the formula for centroid that is sigma it is represented as sigma summation of real part of poles minus summation of real part of zeros divided by p minus z after that we should be trying to determine the breakaway point okay the breakaway point first we should be taking the transfer function 1 plus g of s into h of s equal to 0 okay solve that and get try to get one characteristic equation okay from that characteristic equation separately try to write the value of k by separately writing the k and rest all the terms in other side then try to take the derivative of the dk by ds and whatever from that derivative whatever the equation we get from that for that equation you should try to find the roots and whatever the roots obtain we should be checking whether those roots are valid breakaway points or invalid breakaway points by checking in the graph whether, whether those points lies in the part of root locus or not okay the 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 root locus lying part also i have already discussed that is whenever from a single pole if we check to the check in the right hand side 
how many number of poles are there if there are odd number of poles that region is a part of root locus if there are even number of poles that region is not a part of root locus that also i have discussed okay and whenever we have a breakaway point in between the part of root locus it is a valid breakaway point and whenever we have any breakaway point which is not in the part of root locus that is the invalid breakaway point okay yeah determining breakaway point then also angle of departure okay angle of departure comes into exist whenever we have any complex poles okay in the first step only when we get any complex poles we should be using this angle of departure okay because from that complex poles we should be uh, trying to draw the angle of departure okay and this angle of departure an eighth step is to intersection of root locus with imaginary axis these are some of the steps we have discussed it okay s is equal to plus or minus j omega you should be getting in this form only okay whenever we don't get any imaginary term we should be directly writing the term we have any we have no point of intersection also the problems we have discussed six kind six different kinds of problems for this root locus it is available in our channel all are of different kinds you can uh, check it if you want we have uh, beautifully created all the six kinds of problems for six different videos it is available in our channel playlist so please refer it okay yeah so that's all for this uh, session hope you have recalled the module 4 okay and one question from module 5 is related to bode plots okay bode plots we have not provided the videos for you all but uh, in a short amount of time we would be trying to provide you the brief explanation about bode bode plots and different kinds of problems okay so the problem one problem direct problem related to bode plot is they would be giving you one transfer function and they would we should be representing it in the general form and from that general form we should be trying to write the zeros and poles at origin for different values of uh, d, db per decade and for separately for magnitude plot and magnitude plot and phase plot separate data you should be providing it that i would be explaining you in later in my concept video magnitude plot phase plot you should, you should be trying to draw the magnitude plot and phase plot okay and from that magnitude plot and phase plot you should be trying to calculate the gain crossover frequency and phase crossover frequency and to analyze the stability the phase whenever the phase crossover frequency is greater the system is stable and whenever the gain crossover frequency is greater the system is unstable and whenever these two values are equal the system is marginally stable okay and also phase margin and gain margin Yeah, and that I would be explaining you. Uh, that also they would be telling you to ask. Okay, so one problem related to body plot is definitely asked. Okay, so that's all. And also some problems related to Nyquist plot and state equations are pending, but uh, uh, they would be asking one simple problems related to them. So yeah, so from module five, body plots is one question is must. So you should study that. Okay. so please like share subscribe guys and uh, do well in the exams because this is a very tough exam okay but uh, yet time consuming exam you should be very quick in this okay whatever what are the all of the questions you know first you should be trying to write them all first then i suggest you to draw the graphs that is root locus body plot graphs at the end okay first i suggest you to do the module 3 part okay because that contains uh, more weightage as well as the time consuming is very less you can do it very quickly okay the mechanical system part block diagram reduction part it takes a lot of time okay i suggest you to do the module 3 part module 3 and module 4 uh, rh uh, criterion and problems first after that you should be trying to do the problems related to root locus body plot block diagram reduction mechanical system and all okay yeah so that's all from my side i've tried to provide you all of the important stuffs okay from all the modules so please refer all, all of the videos which we have created in our playlist separately and we have uh, kept it okay for you guys only okay i want you all to please uh, share those videos share the playlist to a huge number like the video share the video subscribe to our channel so that we would be providing these kind of contents regularly to you all so that the studying would be easier to you guys okay so i would be trying my best to produce the best content in the future okay and uh, i would be trying to improving more and more okay so that's all from my side all